Yo, Elliot, I've been married for three years. We've had a very turbulent marriage. The first two years, she didn't do much at home. I was the main person cleaning, cooking, doing laundry, and paying for everything. I put my foot down and told her it wouldn't work unless she supported the relationship and put in some work. Since then, things have been better on this front, but there's still a lot of arguments. We seem to have a very different value system uh, and very different upbringings. We've tried couples therapy, but she quits after three sessions. I continue to work on myself. Uh, She's very controlling. She always wants my time. She never wants to be alone. She always wants to buy new things or wants me to do more like buy her a house and animals. She seems to have a roller coaster of emotions and frustrations. She has said some negative things to me, such as I have no emotions, but I don't want to move ahead with this. She has a major issue with my mom as well. <laughs> One side of me doesn't believe this is the right woman for me due to all the issues and people around me and having told me the same thing. But my emotional side loves her and wants to work it out. I don't know what exercises I can do to find the answer within myself so that I can take action. I can't help but to start this conversation where relationships begin. And relationships begin in our culture with something we call dating. And dating is basically uh, a race to an emotional attachment with someone. Dating means how quickly can we have sex? How quickly can we get on this emotional feeling roller coaster and enjoy each other's tingles, right? How, how quickly can we become entangled with one another? See if we enjoy this entanglement and then move on or not move on. Dating is very different in contrast to courting. And I may even do a presentation on courting. I've been thinking about doing a presentation on the lost art of courting for the 21 convention that I'll be speaking at in October. And if you're interested in joining me at the 21 convention, uh, just go to the 21convention.org and sign up. It's gonna be great, it's here in Orlando. And I'm, going to I'm probably going to present on this topic because it's so important, because courting is a, is a, is a practice of of vetting someone for marriage. People go through long application processes and vetting processes, and you got to do multiple uh, interviews and so forth when they're getting a job. But when it comes to who we're going to marry, we're quick to jump in bed, right? Or what, and when I say quick to jump in bed, I mean we're quick to get emotionally invested in someone before taking the time to see whether or not this person is marriage material. And here you are, you're married to this woman and you probably didn't spot those red flags or you had on sex goggles early on in the relationship. This is a part of the reason why I'm against fornication. I'm part of the reason why I don't think it's good for men to have sex with women out of wedlock is because it very quickly masks the red flags. When you start having sex with a woman before marriage, that means I'm going to put on my emotional suit. I'm going to wear emotional sex goggles. I'm going to see this woman for her sex rather than for her character. That's what happens. It's hard to see someone once you've become that emotionally entangled with them. And that's what happens through sex. It happens to women and it happens to men, right? You, you know, in years past or, or generations past, it would, they, they warned women against this. The warning was against women. Women, keep your legs crossed. Don't open your legs for every man because you're going to be taken for a roller coaster ride. Fornication for a woman was much more risky because she could possibly get pregnant and end up with a guy that's riddled with red flags that she couldn't see because she opened herself up way too early. That was a warning for women, but I make that same warning today for men for a myriad of different reasons because men and women are different today than they were prior to birth control pills and abortions. The whole thing is, is turned upside down. Women behave and think more like men. They're completely unrestrained in, in their emotional outbursts and their, their attitudes, right, as you're starting to see right now. And men have become subservient to the pussy. Men have become passive. Men have become like the woman. And you even in your statement here says, my woman went nuts and I was being the woman, right? You were cleaning, you were cooking, you were doing the laundry, right? You're doing all the things that you're hoping that she would do and she had no intention of doing ever at all. How do you marry, this is from my father, Never marry a useless woman. 
just like you wouldn't hire a useless employee. Marriage isn't about love, guys. And love isn't what we've been told it is. Love has nothing to do with emotions. And marriage has nothing to do with emotions. But if you get emotionally involved, emotionally invested, lustful and attached with your sex goggles on, you're not going to see that this woman is a bad hire. She get, people in your life have to be useful. I don't care what they say in this world when they make us try to make us believe that people should be valued for what they are. You're valued because God loves you. God loves you just the way you are. Or you're valuable just because you are, right? Because you shit, fart, eat, and bleed. Oh, you're a human being. You have value. That's not true. That's not true. Not everybody that breathes and has a heartbeat is of any value. And when it comes to women, just because she has a warm twat doesn't mean that she's a high-value woman. That means you can have sex with her and you'll very easily fall for her. This is the problem. Now, here you are, three years into a marriage with a woman that you were poking that you shouldn't have been poking and that you've fallen down into this pit with, right? It's a problem. It's a problem. We have to hold women to a higher standard, but you're not going to hold them to a standard, if you, or to a realistic standard, a real standard, a worthy standard, a standard that is, is measured by value if you're addicted to her sex. Guys, guys, if we're ever going to win back our position in society if we're ever going to be the men that we were born to be if we're going to be the men of old the men of tradition the men that women expect us to be the men that take their power back we got to stop giving it away to these women through the puss stop having sex with these women because then you end up falling in love with a useless twat and that's what you get sorry bro this is your wife. I don't want to denigrate your life or your wife, but I'm telling you, you got a useless woman. You know you have a useless woman. You got in bed with her, and then you made her your wife. And now, all of a sudden, she's controlling. She wants your time. She never wants to be alone. She wants you to buy things. She doesn't want to clean and cook and help. She wants to be lazy and entitled. She's a bad woman. She's not worth marriage material. Why did you marry her? Right? Why did you marry her? Because, I, you know, I'm answering for you, but... We marry in that situation because we're addicted to the emotions. She may have even been a roller coaster, like you say. You said she seems to have a roller coaster of emotions, right? There's something about a woman and her emotions that, that, that hypnotizes and draws men in, right? Some guys, anyway, a lot of guys, actually. Right? There's something about a, a wild woman that draws some men in. I like a bland woman. I like a basic woman. I like boring women. I, I don't want problems with a woman. I don't want an emotional roller coaster. I don't want a woman that is useless and brings nothing but chaos into my life. But I understand some guys like that. Right? There's nothing you could do about that, but I had to bring that up because it's, it's just happening. Marriages are not working. And listen, marriages are not working, and we can blame women, right? We could say, oh, you know, 60% of marriages end in uh, failure, divorce. And in some states in the United States, 90% are initiated by women. By the way, I've been seeing some news articles that have been going around lately, lately of women who've regretted their divorces, right? Because that's what happens when you give women that kind of power. But anyway, they're the ones creating all divorces. But it's our fault. It's our fault on a myriad of different places. Number one of which is because we give them power by becoming addicted to their pussy. Fornication fucks up your life. You can't win with it, right? And then, I mean, there's a slippery slope in so many different ways, right? I had an email earlier from one of these, one of you guys who asked me, like, Elliot, what do you think? Should I get over my wife's higher body count than me, right? Look, that's an issue. That's a new age issue. That's a post pill and abortion issue. That's a feminist, a feminism, gynocentric focused world issue, right? And I got to worry about how many women my wife slept with. Fornication destroys females. Fornication destroys males. Fornication destroys relationships. It destroys families. Because now he's married to this girl and he can't get it out of his head that, wow, man, she slept, what? Uh, right? It may or may not even be an issue, but it. this is how one woman put it, the, the, the transformed wife. I love following her on, on, on Instagram. She says, fornication defiles your future marriage bed. Because now you're married and you're like, well, I'm, I'm laying in bed with 
20, 30, 50 people that have, have been through have been through my wife. And for guys, I don't think it's that much better. I don't think it's any better. I don't think fornication is a good idea for men either. For different reasons, because men and women are different. Women, women will be with a man that's been with 100 women if she gets the top guy. It doesn't matter. Men, on the other hand, it's going to come up. It's going to come and bite you. It's going to show itself in your relationship. It's going to bother you at some point if you're with a woman who's been a rampant fornicator. It, it defiles your future marriage bed. She's right when she says that. None of this has anything to do with what you should do in your situation, but I have to put this out there so that less men get into this type of situation. Marriage can work if we slow down and we court. That means don't just get involved with any old woman that's willing to spread her legs for you. Know your value as a man. Women know that they, the minute they get you, the minute they get that dick hard and they get you, and I, and I could even imagine it in some of these very diabolical women, they're thinking, aha, I got them. I, all they got to all she has to do is spread her legs and it's like, boom, I got them. Power play. Sex is the power play. Sex is a weapon, right? And, and it's used against us as men, right? It's different for men and women. Right? Because women are the gatekeepers to sex. Sex is a gift from women. Right? It's very different from a man. Right? Because men are, but here's the thing men are the gatekeepers to relationships. Relationship is a gift to a woman. Why give your gift of relationship to a woman? Right? And there's only one. You only get to marry one. Right? That's the way, that's the way I see it. That's the way it should be. Traditionally, you marry one person. You get married, you give your gift. Of relationship to this woman but yet she gave her gift of sex away to you when you didn't deserve it and to maybe dozens of others we don't retain our gifts they say that a woman's what a woman in her early years needs to do is preserve her value and a man needs to build his value and it has everything to do with those two gates for gatekeeping a woman preserves her value by keeping her gate closed right being discerning, right? But here's the thing with a woman. Sex is so easy for women. It's not as easy for men. Sex is so easy for women because most guys just want a bone. And so they all they got to do is spread their legs open. There's not too much about it, at least today, because there's no repercussion. There's no repercussion. There's no, there's no responsibility. There's no uh, accountability for having sex today, right? Because, like, again, we're sterile. We have sterile, transient sex. And if, if something happens, you just kill the baby, right? Diabolical times, my man. But men, we build our value. Why? Because once we're a high-value man, we now have the gate to relationship, right? So a man will have sex because if you're giving it away, we'll take it, right? And this is to women, too. If you're giving it away, men will take it. If you want, if you want a high-value man and you're wondering why you can't attract one, that's because you've given all your value away, right? And men, listen, I know that these aren't popular ideas. These aren't popular. Feminist and feminism, feminist men aren't liking what I'm saying right now. But it's true, right? If you just search within and you take your time and you're honest with yourself, you'll know that what I'm saying is true. We have to stop this. So you've been opening your gate. You didn't preserve your value. As a man... You open the gate to a relationship too early with a low value woman, not even really building up your own value. Take our time. Take your time, men and women. Take your time with giving away your value as a woman. Believe me, you give your value away the more sex you have. And you know how I know women know that that's true? Because they'll never tell you their true body count. Why is it that when you ask a man how many women she, he slept with, he'll inflate the numbers? Why is it when you ask a woman, and women, you know this, you don't have to agree with me or not, you know in the heart of your hearts, that why is it that you deflate the numbers? Because there's shame associated with it. Because you know that you're giving your value away as a woman. Otherwise, you'd be like proud slut, like these, you know, in L.A. when they do that slut walk, right? I mean, it's gotten that bad, too. That women are just like, hey, I'm a fucking slut, right? But they end up being miserable and lonely their whole lives and cat ladies and whatnot with STDs and unwanted pregnancies. Different story. Preserve your value, women. Build your value, men. And as you build your value as a man, recognize low value red flags in women. I don't care how hot she is. Hot is not a standard for relationship. 
how does a standard for sex, and if she's willing to give it, take her value, right? They say, they say that, uh, well, anyway, I'm ranting too much. Take her value. She wants to give her value away, right? I'm not for fornication, but she's throwing it away. But you, as a man, build that value, put up your gate, and be a guard at that gate. No woman's going to get in to relationship with me unless she meets these criteria. When we court, when we're courting, it's like we're doing job applications. Job applications. And don't tell me that sex is a part of the job ap application. I really don't think sex is a part of the job application. Sex is when you get into the job itself. Right? I don't know. Sex is sex. Right? Especially as it, when it comes to a guy. Right? Like, what do you need? Do you need porn sex? Right? Do you need her to, 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 to do what you see all the women do in the pornography movies? Right? Right? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think that's necessary, right? Anyway, so here you are with this wild woman, and I'm sure you had some wild sex with her, and it was a whole lot of fun, but now the roosters come home to roost, right? It's come home to roost. You got to deal with this shit. It's crazy woman. Look, I'm not a fan of divorce. I'm a fan of traditional marriage. I'm a fan of doing it the right way. I'm a fan of staying together forever. I'm a fan of family, right? I want this to work. I really, I, I'm a throwback. I know that. I have a boomer mentality when it comes to this. But I want to see marriages work again because when families work, a country is strong. A people is strong. But we're so divided. We're so, we're so messed up. We're so far gone, man. That even like, I think sometimes it's a lost cause, but I ain't giving up, right? I ain't giving up. So I want to see it work, and I want to see it work for you, but you're, you're in a bad place with a bad woman, right? A useless woman, useless. This is very important. You need a useful woman, right? This is my father. Like I can tell you, this is my father. I, need, I used to disagree with him when I was younger because I was a fag, and I'd be like, no, it's about love, right? Because I was a kid. I didn't know any better. That's why I'm telling you guys this shit now, so maybe like you'll listen to me, or maybe you won't, right? But I didn't listen to my dad. Right? I didn't listen to him, but then when I, when I actually did marry a useful woman, I realized, oh, wow, this is great. And I watched my friends, I'm thinking of one in particular, he has a useless woman. He, had a, he divorced already, but he had a useless woman. He had two sons with this useless woman. She don't cook, she don't clean, she don't help him, she don't please him. She don't do anything but lay back and be a lazy bitch. And my mother says a lazy woman is a nasty woman, right? So there you go, both my parents, right? Traditional marriage. My parents give me some good tips. My dad says, don't marry a useless woman. My mother says, don't marry a lazy woman. Laziness is nastiness, right? If you're not cleaning this house, right? If you're not the one putting on the yellow gloves and scrubbing the floor, she ain't going to do it. My wife, you drop a crumb on the floor, she's over there sweeping that shit up, right? She's cleaning all day long, right? always cooking, right? I'm bragging about my wife right now because guess what? I have a useful wife, right? I don't just love her. I don't just love her because I love her. I fell in love and I have, you know, lustful feelings to her because we have sex, right? And make no mistake about it, I was fornicating, right? I just got lucky. Uh, uh, I'm lucky. But in retrospect, I look back and I'm like, boy, grace of God, I was lucky. But I can see what elements worked and which things I could have done better, right? And that's why I just share what I share with you guys. My wife, all day long, is cooking. She's making me meals all day long. She's washing the dishes all day long. She's homeschooling the kids. She's taking care of the house, keeping it clean. Grocery shopping, all that, all that. My wife is a useful woman. And as a result, she gets all my value. I give her everything, whatever she wants. Why? Because she takes care. She's useful. She gives us, her family, everything that we need, right? So here you are with this wild, useless woman. What do you do? You know, barring divorce, barring leaving her, barring trying to even have a conversation with her, because you said that doesn't work. You try to go to therapy. She doesn't want to talk. She's wild with emotions. What I would do is refer you to a couple of resources that you should read in order to in order to rethink who you are in this relationship, right? First book you gotta read is The Way of the Superior Man, 
Read The Way of a Superior Man because what you're dealing with right now is a hyper feminine woman. She's chaos. And, Ra and, and uh, David Dita in his book refers to masculine and feminine, as we've been talking about throughout this whole day, uh, are, are states of being. Masculine and feminine don't necessarily mean penis and vagina. Male and female mean penis and vagina. Masculine and feminine are states of being. And he even goes on to say that a very masculine man, right? Maybe I'm not that masculine because he says very masculine man, men are attracted to very feminine women. That means the more orderly and sovereign the man is, the more chaotic and wild the woman is. And he says what needs to happen there is that they both know their place, they both play their roles, and they both yield to and work with each other's extremes, right? So you got to read, let him explain it to you. Read The Way of the Superior Man, great book as it relates to intersexual dynamics in couples. You got to read that book. Um, and another book that I've been referring to, uh, and an author I've been referring to, Athol K, I think that is. I always say it wrong. This is a weird name. But he's got a book called The, um, the Mary's Ma Married Man's Sex Primer. Right, and it's not just about sex; it's about frame. It's about masculine and feminine frame in a relationship. And finally, also the book that I refer to uh, by the Blue Pill Professor, titled "Saving a Low Sex Marriage." And it doesn't mean that you have a low sex marriage. You might not have a low sex marriage, but it's a low respect marriage. You have a low respect marriage, and that's worse than a low sex marriage because with low respect comes low sex, right? Usually, right? You guys might just like enjoy fighting with each other and have makeup sex. I don't know. If that's what you're addicted to, if you guys are addicted to uh, makeup sex, that means you're as much an addict to emotions as she is, except you're getting it from her and she's giving it to you, right? So with those resources, my hope for you is that you can reframe yourself, reframe her, and reframe the relationship in a way that allows this to work, right? You know, you say that she don't want to cook, she don't want to clean, she don't want to do laundry. This is the sign of a woman who's lazy and disrespectful. But, this is, you know, I'm not saying this is a guarantee, but a lot of times this is the case, that if she was with a different kind of man, he might have her cooking, cleaning, doing laundry, and being a resourceful wife. Women are a reflection of the man, right? That's why they say a man is like the sun, right? Sons of God. And the woman are, is like a moon, right? A moon reflects, right? A moon doesn't have its own light. It reflects the light of the sun, right? And so a woman is, is your moon and a man is the sun. How are you being reflected through her? How is she reflecting who you are? I've seen it and you've heard it time and time again where a woman was with a man and she was a mess. She was a mess. She was a useless woman. And then she gets with another man and all of a sudden she cleans up her act and she becomes like perfect traditional wife. And you're like, what happened, man? This crazy hoe was giving this guy problems. Couldn't keep her, keep her shit together. She was a mess. And then she gets with this guy and it's like, it's like a totally different woman. That's because she's reflecting the energy of the man that she's with. And right now, it's resourceful for you to take responsibility for how she's showing up as a reflection of you. If you're cleaning and cooking and doing all the things that she should be doing, that is an indication that, or a reflection of you and her in the relationship. It's a reflection of the relationship. It means you want to do those things, right? You made that happen. So it's good to take responsibility for it. And so that's my, that's my advice to you, bro. My advice to all the men out there is be careful who you put your pee-pee in. Be careful who you become emotionally involved with. Be careful who you have sex with and have lust for and, and fall head over heels for and lose your frame for and give your power away to. Be very, very careful about it. And it begins with sex. I understand that sex seems like some exciting conquest, but it's not. It's a slippery slope. And it can destroy your life as per our example. That's my advice to all men. We've got to learn how to vet the women that we allow to receive our value as men. 
Women, like I said, I gave you your advice. Stop spreading your, 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 your legs so often. This is why women can't find good men either. Why buy the cow when she's giving the milk away for free, right? Fornication does nothing but, but pervert an entire culture. And we live in a culture of pure perversion. And it, and it knows no ends. Perversion in a progressive society knows no end. So it's only cascaded, avalanched, and progressed to this very diabolically disoriented, confused time that we live in. So much so that, that literally there are women that think that they're men and there are men that think that they are women. That's how backwards and weird today is. Make no, don't, you know, you ever hear about the frog in the boiling pot? You start, turning the, you start turning the heat up little by little. They don't even know that you're boiling them. This world is like that boiling pot, and the shit is boiling, and we're looking around like, boy, I don't know. Things, things are kind of hot in here, but huh, everybody else is doing it. And you know what? You're being cooked alive. Just watch what's been going on with CV19. Look at the world. How quickly that boiling pot's turned up. Just two weeks. Just two weeks to stop the spread. <laughs> Look at where we are now. We have military taking over schools and hospitals, right? We went from two weeks to stop the spread to military dictatorship, military medical martial law. Two weeks to stop the spread, right? Look at the world around you and don't take it lightly, right? Oh, we're just having fun. We're just having sex. We're just having a good time. Okay, all right, until what do we have now, right? And of course, I already started talking about all the perversions that we live with, right? Right? It's a slippery, slippery, slippery slope. And so that's it, dude. I hope that helps. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. That sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.